Hey there, I'm Ryan Chan, the CEO and founder of Upkeep. If you're part of a maintenance or operations team and you've ever scratched your head over a sudden breakdown, you're in the right place. Today, we're going to explore the fascinating world of maintenance troubleshooting techniques and best practices. And trust me, it's not as daunting as it sounds. We'll help you understand the process, the potential causes of breakdowns, and how to effectively tackle them. So let's jump right into it. Despite our best efforts, equipment will inevitably break down on occasion. These breakdowns can be caused by a wide variety of issues and require troubleshooting expertise to identify and resolve in order to minimize impact on productivity. Unfortunately, maintenance troubleshooting is often performed in a somewhat haphazard way today, relying too often on trial and error, knowledge stored in the heads of senior technicians, and good luck. But it doesn't have to be this way. So what is maintenance troubleshooting exactly? It's the process a maintenance technician must go through to identify the root cause of an asset performance problem. It pulls together a combination of manufacturer information, maintenance checklists, individual asset history, operator observation, and technician expertise to uncover this root cause. Potential causes of an asset breakdown may include a broken part, environmental causes, operator error, or a host of other reasons. Because the possibilities are vast, Maintenance troubleshooting depends on the completeness and accuracy of the background data available, as well as the ability of the technician to correctly synthesize all this information to identify the correct or most likely solution. Now, let's talk about how maintenance troubleshooting is performed. In an ideal world, it's performed in an environment where a strong asset operations management, or AOM, culture and system exists. AOM provides a solid foundation for both an effective preventive maintenance program, which will reduce the number of troubleshooting incidents in the first place, and a comprehensive data collection system, which will better inform any troubleshooting situations that do arise. When an asset breaks down, the first critical step is how operators report the breakdown. Since they work day in and day out on the equipment, they can provide the most accurate description of the problem itself. An AOM infrastructure that allows and prompts for a detailed breakdown report can get maintenance technicians off on the right start. Once technicians receive work orders, they must be able to access equipment instruction manuals, diagrams, and common troubleshooting problems for that particular piece of machinery. Access to this information directly from the work order itself means that technicians can come up to speed quickly on the particular asset. An AOM system should also hold a complete history of the asset in question. This data historically resided in the heads of senior technicians. But when this data is stored within an AOM system, it can be linked directly to related work orders and provide a more expansive view of what is happening with a particular asset. Now let's walk through the five basic steps of maintenance troubleshooting. First, consider the symptoms. The information provided by the operator or line supervisor will be critical in this first step. Understanding what happened and the symptoms that followed will help narrow possible causes. Second, isolate the cause. By combining symptoms with knowledge about the asset itself, a technician should be able to isolate the problem to a particular area or component. Third, test your hypothesis. Once the problem is pinpointed, it's important to test whether the component is not only malfunctioning within the asset itself, but also fails to operate outside the machine as well. Fourth, repair or replace. After testing the component confirms it is the problem, repair or replacement should occur. Finally, test the entire system. Once the new component has been replaced, the asset itself should be tested to ensure these symptoms have resolved. But why is all of this so important? Well, breakdowns can cost manufacturers a great deal of money in a variety of areas. Wasted labor, incorrect repair, downtime, and customer complaints. Now, let's talk about some tips and best practices. Troubleshooting needs to be one component of a larger infrastructure and system where all the parts can work in concert with one another. First, it's important that an organization establish the right cultural mindset among all employees. When everyone works together as a cohesive team, focused on the optimization and performance of assets, the results can be incredible. Second, it's critical to have technological solutions that can facilitate efficient and effective troubleshooting. Not only should a solution be able to centralize and streamline data, as well as provide key reports and analytics, but it must be easy enough for all employees to use quickly and effectively. Finally, having the right types of communication and recognition systems in place 
in order to share team, department, and asset wins can reinforce the culture and encourage best practices across not only troubleshooting efforts, but maintenance overall. As employees see important metrics such as reduced downtime, improved productivity, and decreased cost reported regularly, they will feed into a continuous improvement cycle that will focus on asset performance, reduce overall problems, and effectively address troubleshooting issues when they do arise. And that wraps up our video for today. We've explored maintenance troubleshooting, its importance, and how to perform it effectively. We've also highlighted the importance of a strong AOM culture and system. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. For more resources and information, visit our website at upkeep.com. Stay tuned for more tips and resources to help your maintenance and reliability teams be more successful.